morning everybody happy monday and it's the day after my birthday i had a wonderful weekend birthday week whatever you want to call it i have a whole build up over the month of may um to my birthday and uh Stuart told me yesterday geez you have the best birthdays uh i go what do you think that that is well he goes you just plan for it and um and have all sorts of different things organized and certainly my family does look after me uh, and spoils me but i have to say um yeah i do put in the effort and plan all these things that i want to happen and to make the whole month of may super special so it has been a definitely a fun uh week and a weekend um and fresh ready to go uh today 25th of may uh for the last week of may and hopefully easing into uh less restrictions as we finish off this week here in victoria uh we actually did book our next two week holiday um uh to marimbula because it's kind of just interstate driving holiday um and we've got that to look forward to so that's really exciting all right so this morning i wanted to talk about um seeing as yesterday was also not just my birthday but the 10 year anniversary from the day i started in business um basically i thought you know if i was to um give my old self some advice what are some of the things that i would um uh, have done sooner uh, in business and what are some five things so what are five things I would have done sooner in business and what are five things that I would just repeat exactly the same now before I get into the content um, uh, you know I just want to kind of pre-frame this that um, I I wouldn't change a thing I think everything happened at the right time when it should have I took the lessons I changed and made different decisions but I just kind of thought, you know, if I, you know, knowing what I know now. So it was really actually difficult to come up with the five things I would have done sooner. It was really easy to come up with the things I would repeat and do all over again. Um, but I did come up with the, those two lists and, um, and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, a little bit, a bit about those things and insights because I know it's always really helpful for those of you that are just starting out or you're perhaps in the first few years of your business and you're kind of wondering oh you know nothing's happening or <coughs> i'm putting in so much time so many hours in all of this and um you know when when it starts stuff going to you know skyrocket and i see all these other people and it seems so easy for them but it's not so much for me um so guys before i do that let me just um and get into uh, this and do a, a share in the groups that um, this goes live uh, because you've got to approve it in there so I can't get anyone else to share it for me um, and then we'll get into it so watch parties so I'll just share it across and then we'll get into the five things that I'm, I would do differently uh, well no sooner not differently um, and then the five things that I would repeat. So I think, uh, which one do you want me to start off with? Do you want me to start off with the things I would do sooner or the things that I would do exactly the same? So comment below in the chat box, which one, and I'll do, uh, I'll do one or the other. I'll just do a couple of more shares. Great to see a few of my authors joining in um, and, um, and we will be uh, getting underway in a second. Oh, multitasking at its best. All right, morning, morning, Viv. Uh, morning, Dr. Joe. Um, hope you guys. Oh, I've heard in Queensland it's been chilly. Uh, it's bloody freezing here. Yeah. Thank God. Every time I do my exercise, I'm like hot for two hours, <laughs> and then I'm um, and then I'm better, and then I freeze. Sorry, I cool down. <laughs> oh, I cool down. So my, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, cool. All right, sooner, sooner, sooner. <laughs> Bad news first would not do <laughs> sooner. No. All right, seems to be one of the five things I would have done sooner uh, in the 10 years uh, than before. Okay, and then we do the things that I would have repeated. Okay, And maybe I'll add on more the things that I would have repeated. All right, so I was uh, thinking about, oh, you know, uh, you know, what is it like? Because we have this journey of, um, you know, being in business and it's good to sit and reflect at the end of every year and, you know, then you have a number of years and now it's the 10 years and it's like, wow, what happened in these 10 years? And, you know, I, I shared yesterday, you know, my biggest lessons. If you didn't check out that post, I posted the biggest takeaway and lesson from each uh, year 
like 2010, 2011, 2012, all that sort of stuff. So number one thing, uh, and I'm just going to kind of, I really don't want you guys to um, think that you should be doing this super sooner, <laughs> but uh, paid advertising. I didn't get into paid advertising till about four and a half years in um, because I didn't know much about it, right? And um, usually, um, just because like I worked really, really hard networking, connecting with people and going to events and doing free speaking gigs. So you'll see that I'll say all of those things. These are things I would repeat. Um, but had I known, and it was more, you know, not learning about it and not understanding it um, and getting in um, into it because I think that would have uh, scaled my business a lot faster to keep meeting new people um, but it's also scary for a brand new business owner. Good morning, uh, Julie and Teresa. Teresa. Um, so, so uh, I would have, you know, uh, if I'd known better, I would have, you know, sort of researched, learned a bit more about it. Maybe did some courses to learn properly a little bit about, you know, Facebook ads and what it meant and how to do it properly. Certainly, hired experts. I would not have done it myself. Um, because I did actually have a couple of attempts at setting up a Facebook ad sooner <laughs> and they had no results. Uh, but I know the value we've gotten over the last six years from working with um, someone, you know, who works with us. Uh, we work with them on a monthly retainer and we've got certain budgets and amounts and all that kind of stuff. So I would have got into that world. I should have got into it maybe like a year and a half sooner than I did. Um, but that's because I think you would have, allowed me to develop the business faster. Um, now, in saying that, unless you have made at least $10,000 in your niche, please don't fork out money on paid advertising. You want to have tested something that converts and sells like organically throughout and about and you're presenting your offer and all that kind of stuff and that you've been working with paying clients. So that's the kind of stuff that I would uh, observe so we were like at multiple six figures in the business when we started paid advertising, which literally, and, and I guess the other side of this is that I grew a multiple six figure business from pure organic strategies. So that that is also possible purely from networking, uh, organic social media, um, connecting, catching up with people, doing free speaking gigs, being a guest speaker, um, you know, or hosting my own really low cost events and things like that. So um, I, my only expenses in marketing or advertising were to go and attend a networking event to pay for that luncheon or whatever it was. So um, paid advertising is something I would have done sooner. Um, but uh, how I would have done it is by learning a lot, like taking maybe a course in it properly, understanding about copywriting images, like kind of understanding that world, but then also working hand in hand with an expert and not doing it purely for myself because obviously um, I would have had to then go out and do the selling if they're marketing and I'm, I'm selling, which is what's happening right now. You know, we've got Stuart who works really closely with our Facebook advertising team and then, um, you know, he helps them with copywriting videos and all that kind of stuff and, um, and then we have the delivery and the sales and follow through and all that kind of stuff. So that's number one thing that I would have done sooner. Okay, number two thing that I would have done sooner is hired a virtual assistant about, oh, how, I think two years sooner. Um, so Lindy joined our team um, close to about five and a half years in business, five and a half years. Thankfully, I did have a steward. A lot of solopreneurs uh, who are working on their own in their businesses, they don't have a partner or someone who's joined the business. So Stuart joined the business two and a half years in which was the time when I was starting to really get uh, to need someone to do a bit of the admin and all that. So he did help me, but I think we could have used a virtual assistant um, probably a year. So all of these things that I'm saying sooner, probably sooner by a year and a half, two years, not, um, not like right at the beginning. Okay. So, um, so I would have, you know, hired Lindy probably a year and a half to two years sooner so that Stuart could focus on the more business building uh, and marketing what he's doing right now earlier rather than, than him being bogged down by admin stuff and all that kind of bits and pieces. So hiring a virtual assistant, I highly recommend it. Um, if um, you can outsource it and have someone, you know, offshore and um, 
so you can afford it a lot more in the early days, um, that's something that I would uh, suggest that you do so that you then focus on sales and marketing and um, and all of the business, like what the bloodline of your business. Or otherwise, if you're getting bogged down in admin, you cannot do your um, business building activities. And so when I used to do admin and things like that, it's off, um, off peak hours. So peak hours are Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. That's when I would go networking and I would do all of those activities where I'm connecting with people, having potential opportunities and all that kind of stuff. And all my admin was left to either really early in the morning or really late at night or weekends. Uh, that's when I would fit it in and that's how I would suggest you do it if you really want to build your business and not be sitting at the computer doing admin in the middle of the day on a Tuesday. All right, which, which I have, people have been like, oh, there's so much to do and stuff like that. All right, so number two thing was hire a VA about a year and a half or two earlier. Okay, the other thing is, um, okay, what would I have done sooner is take Stuart on the road with me sooner. So probably, but again, a year or year and a half sooner. I used to get on planes and go to places um, for probably three years uh, before Stuart joined me and helped me out. So everything you guys see at a half day that happens that Reggio, I didn't even, used to in the early days even have crew. Um, then I started bringing in crew and then it was easier and then started bringing Stuart and then it was even easier. But you can imagine like by not having crew or just being myself and all that, I was like everything, like from Reggio to this to that and still everything flowed really um, smoothly because I'm super organized. I always planned like well ahead of time how things would roll out. And, um, and still made really awesome results. But I knew that in some instances, maybe if I wasn't available to speak to some people after the event, they would leave and maybe some opportunities were lost. So I would have taken Stuart on the road sooner um, by a year, year and a half, because I could see as soon as he came, it was actually also for mindset wise, um, you know, having a buddy there to just um, talk to and um, whinge and complain or celebrate with, like there's times where we're like, oh, nothing's happening and or or like why didn't anyone like when I talked to or whatever and then other times like we smashed it and we're celebrating having a few drinks and a dinner and celebrations so that really helps like having the for mindset wise um the buddy but then obviously for uh double the uh, people double the amount of conversations we could have and now our gorgeous um, uh, authors, we can catch up with them and then they come and crew and then we have at least two crew per event. So we actually have four people in our events, which makes it really, really um, easy um, to spread the workload uh, across. So that's what I would have done. And of course, um, my mum's been uh, the person who's then come in uh, to take care of the kids um, while we were on the road. And um, and she's the team member holding the fort back home. And, uh, you know, we call her and celebrate with her and all that kind of stuff. And, and she would have been able to obviously quit her job uh, sooner. But yeah, every time I guess I wait a little bit longer for things just, I guess, for my own comfort level, you know, like for the virtual assistant, I need to pay um, that other person, you know, they rely on me. So it's that hey, taking on that, re I guess one of my biggest thing has, has been taking on that extra responsibility. It's like, is a time, am I confident I can do this? So I think that's what, because if I took Stuart on the road sooner, extra responsibility of extra costs for him to travel with me extra responsibility to take care of a whole wage to pay my mum a full-time wage to work in the business. Um, the VA was similar thing, paid advertising, like, you know, that extra investing and the extra responsibility, that's what kind of where, where I almost wait a little bit longer to feel like, yep, you know, I know how this is going to happen and um, now is the time to take that leap of faith. So this is all connected to that, I believe, if, if I really, like, look at it um, deeper. All right, so uh, what is this? Oh, number four. Okay, number four, what would I have done sooner? Give up on some collaborations uh, earlier to save time, money, effort that I put into them. There was two or three collaborations I was uh, part of in the first five years um, of my business and I just went, let them go on so long. I gave up so much of my time, intellectual property, effort, um, and tr uh, like went to places and they were not even connected some and one of them wasn't even connected to my actual business so it was like something completely different like not even on on the same niche kind of thing um and it went on that one went on i lost money time effort i gave so much like and literally 
you know, sometimes like you learn something from her, you get something out, you always look for the lessons and all that. Um, I believe that one, I can't even find what, you know, if there was something I learned from the other person. Um, and um, I let it go on so long uh, and I should have just, um, you know, stopped it. But, you know, it's really, um, it was the big pain that made me really um, uh, understand what's important in collaborations and how important matched values are and how important it is to, you know, um, really have like things um, clear from the beginning, the goals and what do I want to do with this rather than, oh, it just sounds like a great opportunity, right? And so, um, you know, I was passionate what I was passionate about and now the person was passionate about what he was passionate about. And I just, yeah, it was a complete mismatch now in hindsight. That I was. So, yes, I absolutely know that we learn from everything. Uh, but if I was to go back and what would I have done sooner, I would have dissolved that collaboration oh, in the first three months rather than that, <laughs> let it, allowed it to go for, to 18 months and distract me from what I was doing. So be very mindful in who you collaborate with. Not everyone's got the same work ethic. Um, and commitment or goals and values. It doesn't even have to be about work ethic. Um, goals and values, if there's a mismatch, then obviously at the end of the day, it won't uh, work well. I did have a wonderful collaboration with Francesca Moy. Um, and we still like, you guys know, sisters from another mother and father because we both worked really hard to make our four years. And, and we still like, you know, I think she will probably be guest presenting at my next uh, masterclass so, and there's some collaborations where you really like almost um end up generating a whole business kind of like collaboration where you're really involved and you're profit sharing and all that or there's the ones where Francesca and my collaboration has been a little bit lighter like you know not, not you know, kind of not too hard firm rules but certainly a give and take along the whole way that we've known each other and um uh, and, and I had a great uh, partnership with Mustafa from from uh, the UAE, that was a two-year partner partnership, and we both learned a lot through that, and um, and um, and had a wonderful outcome as as a result. And that only finished up late last year, so so that was great as well. So you learn, and um, but some of the other ones in my early five years, yeah, I should have just uh, uh, nipped them at the bud a lot sooner. Okay, and my number five thing before I move on to the ones that I would repeat again is um, I should have started my own publishing company sooner. Uh, so I started Ultimate World Publishing. It's coming up to the, its two-year anniversary. Um, I think it's August this year. And um, I should have... Um, uh, I was so scared. Like, I knew everything, how it should happen and all that. I mean, I had published seven or eight of my own books uh, by that stage. Um, I just, like, thought, you know, again, taking that rest, extra responsibility. There you go taking that extra um, responsibility of doing the absolute whole process start to finish with my clients. And um, and that was scary for me. Like, you know, oh my God, can I do it? There's a lot of moving pieces here. There's a lot of steps extra. Like, there's a lot of detail when you enter that stage of the, the process um, with people. And um, and uh, when I did it and uh, how much I love doing it, like, you know, publishing the books and being able to control the process and guide it uh, in my style, um, that was wonderful, not just for um, how rewarding it was and being able to provide amazing customer service for my clients now start to finish. Um, and then subsequent books, books two, three, which happening all the time now with our clients, um, you know, but um, yeah, being able to just do it. And of course, uh, financially for the business, it's been a um, highly um, successful decision. Um, so, you know, maybe I should have done it a year or year and a half <laughs> to two, as I said, sooner. Um, but it, it came at the time when I when I could really like, you know, back myself and go, you know what, I can do this with 100% confidence and feel comfortable in it. So those are my five things. If you just joined the call, they were, I would have gone into paid advertising sooner. I would have gotten a VA sooner. I would have taken Stuart on the road a little bit sooner. All of this by only about a year, year and a half given up on some collaborations earlier to save time and effort and money in some cases and also the last thing is started my own publishing company sooner so again a little only by by a year year and a half um and as i said i think the whole strategy behind it was that um i um you know just being comfortable to take the extra responsibility and costs around all of these decisions 
All right, so let's move on to the five things I would absolutely repeat if I was starting all over again. And um, and the one, uh, the first thing, and you guys know I bang on about this so much, and that is networking twice a week. So networking twice a week, um, where uh, obviously right now that might not be possible, but I know a lot of people are networking on Zoom and have converted all these events on Zoom meetings and do those. You're still seeing people and they're seeing you and they can hear you and, and they, you can have your pitch and all that kind of stuff and connect with people afterwards for a coffee, 15 minute coffee or whatever, one on one. So all of those things can still work. I think there's always a way you can pivot to a different way of, of doing it. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, I haven't said good morning to lots of people. This thing doesn't scroll up with the comments. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sending hellos and all that. So um, networking twice a week. I mean, that to me, I found me the opportunities to um, collaborate with people. Um, whether they, oh, they could have been just very quick collaborations, yeah, where, you know, I might speak at someone's event. That's where I got my speaking gigs. That's where I uh, got people who were helping me in my business, legal advice, um, learn how to do my bookkeeping correctly because I went and p paid for a training session for a bookkeeper to understand how to do it because I like doing it. Um, you know, um, and that's where I got find, found my financial advisor. That's where I found my mortgage broker. That's where I found, where I found my super rockstar accountant. Like I just, um, networking wasn't just about me finding clients. It really helped me structure and have the people, the team around me that I have. And you know what? Those people I've just mentioned were back from those first one to three years. They were still in my business. Like they've watched this journey of the 10 years. Um, and they were from those early years where I really networked twice a week. Like, and, um, um, and I still now, as you guys know, that I still, I host my own events. That's networking, right? I mean, I get, uh, people get to meet me and I get to meet them. Uh, what a better place to network than my own event, right? Um, you know, I do a lot of things. I put in that effort to be face to face with people. I think it's the most powerful thing when someone meets you in real life and how much you can fast track in the business. So once we're out and about, we're allowed to go to events, go to events, certainly make things happen online and attend and be part of things that are happening right now. But guys, once we are able to go make the effort, especially if you're new one to three years business, you need to meet people, they need to meet you and you'll start to help each other, make new friends and, and you'll be able to expand your business. So that's number thing that I'll do all over again. And I'm still doing it. As I said, I've attended more than 1,200 events in the last 10 years. Yeah. And I write it out in my planner at the top of every week. It says my two events this week are. Okay. That's how, how, how important this is. Okay. Number two thing that I would certainly repeat again is again, once again, write a book ASAP. Write a book ASAP. Um, because a lot of you guys who listen to me are small business owners and you have expertise in something. Uh, write a book about it. You're going to be taken a lot more seriously. So when you go to that networking event and you stand up and say, this is who I am, and I wrote a book on my expertise, um, people take note because not many people, and I can tell you in 1,200 events, aside from running into my authors, um, you know, out and about after the fact, but only it came across two authors across the whole time I was networking this, those first five years, right? really really important and that you um uh that you make an effort and have something tangible because people who are in service-based businesses they sell hot air right and how do you make hot air lucrative well you write a book and you show people and you, they they start to go wow they've gone as far as writing a book they must be really serious about what they that they're talking about they're passionate about this there's this perception and selling is easier when you're an author okay it's a lot more soft and um i don't know seen as respectful rather than oh well, you know they're like a dirty car uh, car uh, or used car sales person all right so make sure uh it, well i would write a book asap which is i did i did i did it in the first seven months it was published by month uh 13 and i was out and about using it which is what got me all those speaking gigs so number three thing is in i would still repeat investing in mentors to learn and fast track Okay, invest in a mentor, but not too many all at once, right? One program, start, finish it properly, implement, get my return on investment, then move on to the next thing or the next mentor. So I see a lot of people shiny object syndrome. They want to invest in this, 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 this. Oh, I need all of this, right? But they don't actually utilize all the gold that's within each of those things I've invested in and 
implement and then get return on investment. So my thing, and this is exactly how I did it and I would repeat it again, is you invest, you spend the time, give every program or mentorship or course six to 12 months, okay? Six to 12 months, not like five minutes. When people come into my retreats, I say, you treat this as a 12 month process. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get your book done and you might be quick and all that sort of stuff depending how, uh, how, how committed and how much you wanna fast track. But you need to attend the master classes to, to really grasp how to leverage this book and to understand and all that sort of stuff. And then you need to come to the Monday morning weekly uh, live course, which is coming up in five minutes. I need to get off soon. Um, you know, for my, my authors, you need to, you know, there's depth behind this information. Like, if you want to get the results I've gotten in these 10 years, you need to learn the stuff. And I can't teach you that in five minutes or just in the 48 hours of the retreat, yeah? So that's what I would do again, and this is what I did. I did my um, my coaching course, which was a two-year diploma. At the same time, yes, I did have a one-on-one -on -one mentor who helped me like, navigate and be able to like work on myself at the same time. Then I did a marketing masterclass. Then I had a different, had three different mentors over three different periods. And I have done various programs where I wanted to work out how to solve a particular pro pro a problem, hired a mentor or bought a system, um, and work that out and put it in. So not too many all at once because you can't give them justice and your brain will get overwhelmed and you're not going to do anything because a confused mind will always say no, as you guys have heard me say many times before. All right, number three thing that I would repeat is certainly do and run my own events as soon as possible. And I started running my own events. Um, I think my first event, if I can tell you, someone was asking me this the other day, wasn't it that you did like a house party? You know, like how they have those Tupperware parties that people come to people's houses and get seven or eight people there. My first event was a party like that, but obviously on personal development. And my mum's Lee, uh, Lee's house, my mum's best friend, who called all the girls who would normally come for the Tupperware party, let's say. There was five or six of them, mum, Lee, and I think four, uh, Lee's mum and three girlfriends, yeah, six of them uh, watching me. And I set up a whole presentation and I had little goodie bags and like offered a coaching session or whatever it was. But that was my first event. Like uh, someone hosted it and it was two months in uh, after I, uh, like so it was May. I, to, uh, yesterday was the first day I started a business 10 years ago. Then it was that July that I did that. So starting to run my own events where I would be able to stand in front of people, have and organize everything from start to finish, have a call to action, give away some goodies and all that value, all that kind of stuff, um, I would start to run my own events. You know what? In the first 12 months, my events were four people, five people, two people, one person, four people, six people, and yet I kept going. And the numbers increased and increased and increased every year, right? To now we're like sold, selling it, like we're closing them down at 35 because we don't want any more. Uh, that's how like we have like kind of this thing uh, of how many people we want to have our events at. Um, she was, was saying to me yesterday, oh my God, 26th of May sold out. 10th of June is at 30 people and nearly 35. You guys, should we try 55? Like go to there. Otherwise open the next date. Right, so it'll happen, but it's just it's not going to happen immediately. You just have to keep turning up, right? And people have to see that you're consistent. All right, so I would run my own events, I, uh, you know, and um, first year, you know, plan six to ten events, six to ten, not two, you know, because you get confidence in speaking. That's what you actually why you should even run it in front of a few people is because you'll get more confident and clear on your message and externalizing what you speak about. And the very last thing, because I do have to get off at 9.30, is speak at other people's events. What would I repeat again? Speak at other people's events. So this is tied in, obviously, with running my own events, but why also speaking at other people's events? Because then I could uh, speak in front of people, give them a taste of who I was, and then my call to action would be, come to my event. So that's how I got bums on seats. And bums on seats that were already warmed up from the speaking gig, that would then come to my event, that would then progress to work with me, because then they had multiple touch points. Yeah. All right. So let's summarize the five things that I would repeat. Networking twice a week, writing a book ASAP on my expertise, investing in mentors to learn and fast track, running my own events and speaking at other people's events for free. Okay. That's what I would repeat doing again. So I hope that that was valuable um, and gives you a bit of insight um, of, you know, I guess taking the, uh, looking back on, you know, that decade of, of stuff that's been going on. 
and just know that I have been where you have been if you're obviously um, an, a, a business owner in the first one to five years and I have walked through all of those things that you're probably finding as challenges right now that you know um, not having enough leads not having enough bums on seats uh, not knowing where the next thing will come from, ups and downs in terms of how good the business is going or not going, um, and decisions where I'm so sick to my stomach that I would have to invest in something that I didn't know what would happen, you know, needing to make those big leaps of faith to work with people and um, progress. All right, guys, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go across to my authors group and do their Monday morning uh, weekly Q&A. And then I've got my accountability course. I've got three things back-to-back -to, -back to sort out this morning. Have a wonderful week and smash it out. Bye, guys.